We'll get started with what is now our first session for this afternoon, the use of citrus bergamot in cardiometabolic risk management. And our presenter today, I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Vincenzo Malacce. He is the scientific director, professor of pharmacology, herbal and antioxidant derivatives. And I know you want to hear from him and not hear me ramble, so I will just pass this over and we will hopefully have a few minutes for questions and answers. And if you're watching online, you can submit those and those will be submitted to me as well. So we'll be able to pose questions at the end of his presentation. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to be here today discussing on the potential for supplementation with the citrus bergamot derivatives and especially with the polyphenolic fraction of this citrus fruit in the management of cardiometabolic risk and especially in subjects undergoing metabolic syndrome. And uh, it is known that all around the world the cardiometabolic risk is uh, uh, a serious issue as the uh, cardiovascular disease represents uh, the leading global cause of death all around the world, and especially in industrialized countries, but you can see that also in uh, uh, growing countries, you have an increase of the incidence of uh, cardiovascular disease, and uh, uh, we expect that in uh, 2030, uh, we will uh, uh, account for uh, more than 22 million of deaths related to cardiovascular dysfunction. And the major risk factors are the usual known smoking of cigarettes uh, and uh, uh, increasing systolic blood pressure, but especially the changes in metabolic performances uh, in uh, subjects uh, are relevant regarding the dyslipidemias and the management of serum, glucose, and uh, of body ma mass index. And uh, it has been shown that the target for reducing the most serious biomarker uh, related to the uh, cardiometabolic risk, the LDL cholesterol, is uh, uh, in the area of 70 milligrams per DL. And this is much less than the one we considered a few years ago when we started studying with the combination of drugs and natural products. And uh, the target of 70 milligrams or less uh, is obtained when uh, very serious drugs uh, such as statins or PCSK9 inhibitors are used at concentration which need to be very high in the range of 40 to 80 milligrams a day. And you can see here the full disclosure from the European Society of Cardiology in which it has been shown that you need a very high concentration of statins in order to get the target of 70 milligrams a day. And uh, uh, the consequence is that the reduction in cardiovascular risk is counteracted by the occurrence of consistent side effect, much more than the one which are uh, disclosed in uh, uh, clinical trials. So you have a higher incidence of muscle pain and you have a very high incidence in the long time of uh, memory loss. So the consequence is that to reduce the 40% of the risk related to the LDL cholesterol, we have to use a very massive concentration of drugs uh, in which we have a residual risk, which is the 60%, which is not counteracted by statins, and which is represented by inflammation, oxidative stress, and additional antithrombotic uh, requirements, which are not obtained uh, simply with the statins. So, we, which is the reason? The reason is that all the risk factors we considered at the beginning tend to cluster together and uh, you may not act against a single component such as LDL cholesterol. And uh, which is the... Uh, we have uh, uh, 
there is any room enough to identify further interventions such as nutraceutical supplementation in order to produce a, a general effect in any of the components which contribute to the development of cardiometabolic risk. And uh, uh, in uh, recent years, many products, uh, natural products, have been suggested to may interact with different components of the pathway which leads to the increased cardiometabolic risk. And uh, uh, the, there is a major limitations related to the use of many of those products which have been checked to date. The first one is the uh, limited uh, reduction of LDL cholesterol, which is not exceeding the 15-20% for many of the products you have all around here, for example. But the other one is that uh, there is a poor scientific evidence, so you have no evidence on clinical trials, very poor evidence for mechanism of action, and an uh, uncertain impact in long-term cardiometabolic risk. So you have no data for very prolonged period. And uh, you have no relevant information on the safety profile. So in the last few years, we studied the bergamot fruit, which is a, a powerful source of many active principles which uh, have to be taken into account when approaching the problem of redu reducing the cardiometabolic risk in uh, subjects with uh, metabolic syndrome. And uh, uh, the, uh, especially we isolated uh, a polyphenolic fraction which is very rich in polyphenols, more than one gram per liter, and uh, which is well characterized from the uh, point of view of the chemical composition, which is uh, an absolute requirement in order to be uh, to make sure that the response we expect when using bergamot derivatives is the one which is reported in clinical studies. The mechanism of action has been well characterized. There is a, an efficacy and safety profile which is standardized after more than 12 clinical studies. To date, we have more than 50 papers which have been published with more than 300 impact factor and 12 clinical trials uh, in, uh, which have been uh, made in more than 1,500 patients which have been enrolled in the studies. So all those components contribute in, uh, the, uh, to make a product reliable, especially if the requirements are to find in uh, uh, very controlled studies from the chemical point of view, which is the right composition of the product. And uh, the same is regarding the activity which has been proven in clinical studies, and we will try to summarize a few of them. Uh, uh, we discussed about metabolic syndrome, and uh, uh, the bergamot polyphenolic fraction has been demonstrated in uh, randomized, uh, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies that it, it is able to reduce any of the components which are related to the metabolic syndrome, so we have a significant reduction of total and LDL cholesterol. We have an increase of uh, a, a HDL cholesterol, a reduction in triglycerides, and a reduction in serum glucose. This is the mean of the responses which have been found in more than 12 studies. And uh, the uh, uh, placement in therapy, you can see, is close to statin such as simvastatin which is still the statin which is uh, used all around the world in combination with ezetimide. Well, the other aspect is the series of properties which have been disclosed uh, during the last 12 years in uh, all those studies, both preclinical and clinical, and you can see there that we know a multi-action activity which is related to reduction in the absorption, re uh, modulation of the principal pathways which are uh, uh, related to the uh, um, uh, utilization in the liver. And we will see especially that lipoproteins may play a role in the major effects which have been described for BPF. 
And uh, you can see there that especially lipoprotein sites, vascular inflammation, and the potential for reducing side effects correlated to the use of statins may represent a key action to uh, identify BPF as one of the best solutions for supplementation patients with metabolic syndrome. And uh, the anti-inflammatory effect has been uh, demonstrated uh, uh, more than 15 years ago in which we investigated the potential of BPF in a model of balloon injury in carotid arteries. You know that if you use this model, you produce a lesion in the carotid artery, which is very similar to the one you can find in coronary arteries during uh, the um, uh, revascularization, which occurs after <coughs> a myocardial infection. And this is related to the occurrence of expression of a receptor, which is LOX1, is the receptor for oxidized LDL. And you can see that after injury, if you use bergamot extract, you have <coughs> a reduction in uh, um, the expression <coughs> of uh, LOX1 receptor. <coughs> Sorry. And this effect is also related to the <coughs> reduction of oxidative stress which is uh, occurring. Thank you, Annie. <coughs> and this is shown by the reduction in the expression in carotid arteries after injury of nitrotyrosine, which is uh, the footprint for oxidative formation and deformation of uh, um, free radical species. <coughs> well, <coughs> another target of inflammation is represented by fibrosis you can find in, uh, in the liver of animals undergoing fatty liver disease. And this has been published in a scientific report of Nature one year ago, in which we demonstrated that BPF is able to reduce not only fat accumulation, but also fibrosis, which is accompanying <coughs> steato. <coughs> Sorry. Steato hepatitis. And uh, you know that this condition is the one which is uh, leading to cirrhosis and uh, cancer. And uh, another component is represented by lipoproteins. And uh, you can see there the lipoprotein composition. <coughs> Just a moment. That composition in, uh, of lipoprotein is fundamental for resolving the problem of uh, uh, atherogenesis. And uh, we studied the different composition in LDL cholesterol and LDL particles in subjects undergoing inflammation and liver disease. And you can see that small dense lipoproteins are the ones which are generating atherosclerosis. And when approaching the treatment and the residual risk in subjects with metabolic syndrome, you have to try to increase the large lipoprotein and to reduce the small lipoproteins, as the small lipoproteins are the ones which are generating damage in blood vessels. And we, in a clinical trial, demonstrated that BPF is able to reduce total LDL cholesterol. However, we have an increase in the number of large LDL and the reduction of the small LDL. This is a crucial point since you cannot get this result with statins. You can decrease LDL cholesterol, but the ratio between the small and large remains the same. 
And this is an additional effect which reduces the residual risk. This is important. The other aspect is the increasing adherence of subjects to the treatment with statins and PCSK9 inhibitors. It is known that adherence is able to produce consistent effect in the total response, as more than 30% of subjects undergoing statin treatment are obliged to stop the treatment due to the occurrence of muscular pain and consistent side effect. And uh, we studied the potential for the combination of BPF with rosuvastatin, which is the golden standard for statin treatment. And we demonstrated that you can reduce by 50% the dose of rosuvastatin and to maintain a very good response close to the target without the occurrence of side effects. You don't need CoQ10, for instance, in the treatment with statins in order to produce benefits. You have just to add BPF as a supplementation. And finally, the other aspect is represented by the potential when several statins, uh, uh, which are drugs, are used into supplements such as the red yeast rice, which has been used for large quantities and for years in uh, Europe and not only in Europe, and in which it has been shown that the side effect and the adherence to the treatment is nearly the same as compared with the statins. However, recently it is known that European Food Safety Authority suggested a very serious warning against the use of monocoline K, which is the major component of red yeast rice with the serious issues for the human health. And uh, we uh, made a comparative study uh, between BPF and red yeast rice in order to verify whether or not the response which has been associated to red yeast rice could be in any way evaluated uh, in comparison with the one produced by BPF. And uh, you can see the next slide, please. Could you please move forward? OK. You can see that BPF is much more effective in reducing LDL cholesterol and uh, we have the additional response, which is reduction in triglyceride, reduction in oxidative stress, and modulation of PCSK9 receptors, which are the crucial response we expect for an overall activity in counteracting metabolic syndrome. So in conclusion, uh, our data demonstrate that alongside with lifestyle changes, uh, the supplementation with natural antioxidants is of relevant benefit in counteracting metabolic syndrome. And this effect is accompanied by serious antioxidant response and reduction of the inflammation of blood vessels at any level, including the one uh, at the liver level in which fibrosis is relevant for the development of the disease. And finally, the effect uh, on serum cholesterol and LDL cholesterol are accompanied by effect in uh, lipoproteins uh, and uh, in uh, the progression of the disease, which are today the major components of a successful response, which is uh, uh, according to the guidelines of the European Society of Cardiology and Cardiovascular Risk Prevention. So thank you very much for your attention. Just a few information on the product, which uh, is in the range of those between 500 and 1,200 milligrams a day, and which is commercialized also as a bergamot uh, by HP Ingredients. And I have to thank, obviously, all my group of research, which is uh, studying these processes since uh, uh, 15 years 
and all the other co-workers, including uh, uh, the leading person of the European Society of Cardiology and of the Heart Failure Association, which are Stephen Anker, Andrew Coates, Giuseppe Rosano, and Maurizio Volterrani. Thank you for your attention. Then we have a five-minute video in which we would like to share with you a few information on the context in which the bergamot grows. I hope. My, okay, mate. <coughs> Bergamon is a unique Italian citrus which grows almost exclusively in the Ionic coast of Calabria region in southern Italy. The medicinal use of Bergamon has been forgotten for decades and is now being rediscovered by the world as the most important natural product to address metabolic balance and cardiovascular health. HMAD Herbal and Antioxidant Derivatives is an Italian company formed in 2008 with the mission to introduce to the world the highest quality, patented and human clinical bag bergamot extract. Siamo alla settima generazione che si occupa della produzione di oli essenziali di agrumi. Il bergamotto è il nostro principale prodotto di spicco, un prodotto 100% italiano che cresce in una piccola zona di Reggio Calabria. Dal 2021 ci siamo diventati soci della H&D che si occupa principalmente della rivalorizzazione di quella che è la produzione proveniente appunto dal bergamotto. Grazie alle sue proprietà antibatteriche e antisettiche è un prodotto necessario nell'industria cosmetica, farmacologica, in aromaterapia e in profumeria. philosophy is how to find in trees and in plantations the due condition to generate active ingredients which are of benefits on the bedside of patients. The use of derivatives or byproducts from bergamot today in making nutraceuticals is an example of a green economy since we remove potential pollutants and we increase the amounts of nutraceuticals which may be of benefits for the health. In HND, il rispetto della terra e della natura è fondamentale ed è l'unica azienda che a tutt'oggi riesce a implementare sempre con nuove ricerche, nuovi studi e nuove forme di estratto quello che è la potenzialità del bergamotto. La visione base di questa azienda è quella di rendere disponibile la grande forza che esiste nei prodotti della natura al maggior numero di gente possibile nel mondo, perché personalmente ritengo che questa sia la chiave della felicità e della lunga vita. La peculiarità che di questo frutto è quella che naturalmente è un frutto curativo che crea benessere, specialmente il succo in maniera particolare. È lì la nuova frontiera che è stata portata avanti dall'Accademia del Bergamotto da circa 30 anni che si è sempre affiancata al professore Mollace che è conosciutissimo, un, un ricercatore apprezzatissimo da tutti e che naturalmente ha fatto tanto per l'Accademia del Bergamotto, si sono create delle sinergie importanti e che ci hanno consentito nel tempo di promuovere questo nostro frutto non solo come un prodotto da utilizzare nel campo della 
profumeria, ma anche in quello del campo della farmacologia come integratore. Ma piano piano siamo riusciti ad affermare il bergamotto in eh, gastronomia, sia in pasticceria, nella liquoristica, anche nell'alimentazione. Con bergamotto mi sento un leone, caminchi i vitamini e vitamoni. Berga, berga, berga molto, non pensate che non spotto. Berga, berga, berga molto, non pensate che non spotto. Any question? Okay, so uh, I do just want to open this up for questions for a couple of minutes. We have a couple of minutes if there are any questions. And clearly bergamot is uh, more than an ingredient. It's part of a culture. Uh, so it's wonderful to see some of the benefits unleashed and uh, appreciate what you've been able to share with us today, Professor Mo Molace. Um, any questions from the audience? Again, we have two or three minutes. And you can also learn more information at HP Ingredients Stand. That's number 53. 53. Right? Yeah. OK. Oh, a question before we close. Hi there. Uh, you've spoken about the benefits of serum cholesterol reduction. Um, what about formed arterial cholesterol? What sort of reduction can people expect to see taking BPF? <laughs> Well, the, uh, normally the reduction you can see in a very short time is in circulating cholesterol. However, the response we have seen at three or four months after uh, the treatment with BPF on LDL lipoprotein composition is uh, reflecting a long-term response you can uh, uh, eventually estimate in uh, one-year treatment. So the other part is that you have a removal of many of the fat in animal models of fatty liver disease, which is a stable response. So we believe that we have transfer from the circulating pool of cholesterol to the deposits in the blood vessels. 